there, my friends. Welcome to episode number 463 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Are you ready? Because this week, we are talking about the largest AI processor ever made. 850,000 fully programmable cores, brain scale AI training, and why only the right kind of processor can truly accelerate AI potential. That's right. Andy Hawk, Chief Product Officer from Cerebra Systems, is joining us to chat about all of that and more. But before we bring in Andy, how about a little Kickstarter corner? Have you ever thought to yourself, if I just had an exoskeleton, my life would be complete? Well, now you can. And not just that, an AI-powered exoskeleton. Yeah, let me introduce you to a new Kickstarter campaign called The Sportsmate 5, the world's first and lightest Portable, wearable, robotic exoskeleton. So yes, exoskeletons for humans have been around for a while, but mostly have stayed within the military, rehabilitation, and industrial arenas. Until now. The goal of this Kickstarter campaign, according to its designer, Enhanced Robotics, is to alter the way you interact with the world by applying exoskeletons to your everyday life. Okay, so how exactly are we going to do that? Well, a key here are the actuators that are at your hips on the exoskeleton. These actuators provide resistance when your goal is training muscle and assistance when you need to save energy. There are two different modes included, the outdoor mode and the fitness mode. In outdoor mode, the actuators actually help lift up your legs and push them forward, which helps specifically when it comes to going upstairs, hiking uphill, or just walking. The fitness mode is a little different. The key here is resistance. Resistance in this case comes from both extension and flexion. The goal of this mode is to focus on burning more calories and gaining more muscle strength in less time than a more traditional workout routine. And bonus, lots of people at the gym will undoubtedly ask you what the heck you're wearing. So there's that. So what are we really talking about when it comes to the Sportsmate 5? Well, their product can be divided into three different subsystems the gate controller system or central controller system, the actuator system, and the energy system. Now that energy system is pretty cool. It can actually harvest the energy from your movement and then recharge its battery as well. And then there's the AI. So this team from Enhanced Robotics have developed a torque-based AI algorithm that can adapt to complex environments. Now, this is a step away from traditional exoskeletons, which use trajectory algorithms for medical rehab purposes. The Sportsmate 5 AI algorithm actually analyzes data from the motor encoder to detect your gait, and then it provides precise torque support with every stride. Now, maybe you don't need an exoskeleton for yourself, but you'd love to work with this technology. So Enhanced Robotics has you covered in that case. They are also offering a developer box with an extended interface as well. So as far as I can tell, if you pledge around $7,000, you get the chance to purchase one of these exoskeletons. So not exactly cheap. But it does include a bunch of accessories, including a knee brace, a back strap, a couple extra batteries, a power adapter, and of course, the exoskeleton. Now, if you want even more information about this Kickstarter campaign and where to buy one for me, (laughs) just kidding, (laughs) I've included a link that will take you directly to their Kickstarter campaign on this week's Fish Frying page on eejournal.com. 
All right, it's time to bring in Andy Hawk from Cerebra Systems to talk about that largest AI processor ever made, the 7 nanometer wafer scale engine 2, and how Cerebra Systems is democratizing access to high performance AI computation and a whole lot more. Let's go. Hi Andy, thank you so much for joining me. Happy to be here Amelia. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so first off, for my audience who may not know, what is Cerebrus Systems all about? Cerebrus is an AI computer systems company. When we look out at the compute landscape today, we see growing demand for what we see as one of the most important compute workloads of a generation in neural network computing for deep learning, training, and inference for artificial intelligence. And as we looked out at that growing demand and potential, what we saw is that most researchers and data scientists and application developers in that domain are today using legacy general purpose processors like CPU and GPU. And we think there's an opportunity at Cerebris if we build the right kind of processor and computer system to accelerate that work and the realization of AI's potential by orders of magnitude. And so we are building at Cerebrus what we believe is the, the right computing platform for deep learning and AI as we go forward. So Cerebrus Systems recently launched the largest AI processor ever made, the seven nanometer wafer scale engine two. So give me some details about this new AI processor. This wafer scale engine two is 56 times larger than the largest GPU. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely right. In 2019, we launched the first generation of our wafer scale engine, which we called the WSE1. And this year, we announced our second generation of the wafer scale engine, the WSE2. You're absolutely right. This is fabricated at the seven nanometer processor node. The wafer scale engine, think of it as a dinner plate sized computer chip. 56 times larger than the largest GPU or largest processor built before it. It's eight and a half by eight and a half inches of unbroken silicon. And at the seven nanometer process, we then can deliver 850,000 individual fully programmable AI optimized cores. This is an 850,000 core dinner plate size processor. Uh, we also have 40 gigabytes of all on chip. SRAM, that's so all accessible within a single clock cycle. And each one of those 850,000 AI optimized cores is laid out as a regular 2D grid on the wafer. And they're all connected to one another over a north, south, east, west 2D interconnect mesh, offering extraordinarily high bandwidth and low latency communication between processors. At the end of the day, Imagine the wafer scale engine as a cluster worth of deep learning compute resources, but all on a single chip within a single device. That's really cool. Now, you guys also announced brain scale AI training. So what all does this training include? Ah, yeah. So what we've seen, particularly over the last several years has been a continued exponential growth in the compute requirements for large AI training workloads. For example, just in terms of what's going on in natural language processing, in 2018, researchers at Google introduced a state-of-the-art natural language processing model called BERT. The base version of BERT has 110 million parameters. Think of those parameters as open variables that learn from training data. It's a metric for the size of a deep learning compute workload. Fast forward just two years, researchers at OpenAI introduced a new state-of-the-art natural language processing model called GPT-3. GPT-3 is 175 billion parameters. So in just two years, state-of-the-art models in AI for natural language processing grew by three orders of magnitude, a thousand X. And so we're seeing this explosive growth in the compute demands 
for large AI models that continue to grow larger and, and larger, requiring clusters of legacy general purpose processors like CPU or GPU. For example, GPT-3, that 175 billion parameter model introduced by OpenAI in 2020, took about four calendar months to train on more than a thousand GPUs. And so what we're seeing is that these models are becoming so large that they're becoming impractical for most organizations, data scientists and ML researchers to work with. They're becoming so large that really only a few organizations have the compute resources to train or work with these models. So we at Cerebrus, one of the reasons that we built the wafer scale engine and our CS2 computer system was to allow more organizations to be able to work with large state-of-the-art models on a purpose-built computing platform that's far easier to program and manage than say a hundred or thousand node GPU cluster. So just recently then, coming back to your question, at Hot Chips this year, we introduced a new set of technology innovations at Cerebrus that we call weight streaming that will allow researchers to train extraordinarily large models on a single CS2 device, as well as cluster those devices together to go faster. So in a nutshell, weight streaming will allow users to train models up to 120 trillion parameters on a single device and be able to cluster together as many as 192 CS2 systems with near linear performance scaling across them to train those models faster. Wow, Andy, that's impressive. Now, I also saw that you guys have a partnership with Cirrus Scale Cloud Services that helps designers access Cerebrus's CS2 via the cloud. So tell me about the motivation behind this partnership in particular. Yeah, that's a great question, Amelia. And we're really excited about the partnership with Cirrus Scale. As I mentioned earlier, we introduced our first generation system in 2019, our second generation system this year. Our go-to-market approach has been very conscientious during this period. We first elected to focus on delivering to customers systems directly to their on-premise data center. This gave us the opportunity to work with world-class organizations, for example, like Argonne National Laboratories and our partners at GlaxoSmithKline in commercial pharmaceutical development, gave us the opportunity to work with those customers directly in every part of their organization from their data center and facility managers, system administrators, IT professionals, all the way to their data scientists and ML researchers as we brought this new class of computer system to market. So that informed our deployment strategy, our data center and system administration software development, as well as our broader product roadmap. In our go-to-market vision, we've always had ambitions of making this high-performance AI compute platform available not just to organizations that have world-class data center facilities, but also to organizations and users that might not have a cluster or a data center or whose businesses are cloud native by design. And so our next step in go to market for the wafer scale engine and CS systems is really to make these systems available, not just for data center deployment, but also for remote usage and usage through the cloud. And Cirrus Scale is the partnership that allows us to do this. So organizations who are already working on cloud infrastructure can bring their data to Cirrus Scale, use a CS2 system or CS2 systems to train their models more quickly or run inference on their data sets more quickly, and then use adjacent infrastructure for the rest of their work. So for us, the partnership with Cirrus Scale is really one step and an important step towards democratizing access to high performance AI compute well beyond organizations that, that happen to have world-class data center facilities. That's fantastic. 
All right, Andy, it's time for your off the cuff question. Now, since you haven't been on my show before, you get the standard off the cuff. Okay, so a lot of us have been on some level of lockdown, seems like forever. A lot of us can't have our favorite foods. So Andy, if you could have one meal right now, doesn't matter if you need a passport to get there, it is on the other side of your state, or even if the restaurant is closed, what would you have? It's, it's making me hungry already. I, I think just <laughs> while you're asking that question, Andy, <laughs> I had about a half a dozen answers pop up in my head. <laughs> I, um, I think I'm going to go with an old standby. I am a sucker for bacon cheeseburger, and French fries, and a Caesar salad and a nice glass of wine. Uh, I nice. feel like almost any time that'll do the trick. Um, and since we're a few hours from lunchtime, I'll, I'll just put Great. that in the back of my mind. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Andy, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Amelia, thanks again. Really appreciate it. If your audience members have any questions, feel free to reach out to us through www.cerebrus.net. And before we go, don't forget to check out my new maker-themed monthly fish fry podcast series called Makers Today. In our seventh episode of this series, I chat with Dr. Goff Lu. We chat all about the product review section of his website called Dr. Goff's Review Challenge and what sets his reviews apart from other technology and component reviews out there today. We also discuss his role as a top member of the Element 14 community, the details of his recent blog post about a crude inverter design, and how a gift of a car battery when he was a kid inspired him to experiment with electronic design. And you can check out this episode of Makers Today by clicking the link below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you want to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow me or us on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this year's podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. It really does help. And remember, if you'd like any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on eejournal. For the week of December 17th, 2021, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.